All right, everybody. I'm going to turn this on. Hey. Oh. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, we can. Great. All right, I'm going to share my screen here uh, momentarily, and we'll wait for a few folks to get in. And then I'll cover a couple of announcements, explain what we're doing today. Our focus with these events is really to kind of go through how we're seeing professionals start to use these tools, uh, what's compelling for professionals and you know people who have a, a aspiring uh, creativity and, and how they can really work with these as tools rather than just kind of shifting the whole job of creating to an AI. Our goal as a company since uh, you know, we started the company and before then, when we were just kind of a, an aspiring open source project, the very foundation of what we're trying to do right now is equip creatives with the tools and education to succeed in the coming world. We're kind of you know starting to understand uh, how AI is influencing our work and how we create. And, you know, overall, I think we've seen a lot of feedback from the video tutorials that we've done that have shown how these tools can be used um, and, and how they are controllable. An area that a lot of professionals uh, cite needing tools for is to control the AI, to get consistency, to have more influence over what comes out the other side, and, and to really have visibility into what that process looks like. And that's an area that we you very candidly work to find the balance for and you know i think there are a lot of tools out there both in the open source space as well as you know some of the consumer grade tools that are on the internet um, that have taken all of the technology and created a very thin layer where you put in a prompt and you get an awesome picture like 95 percent of the time but that awesome picture isn't always what you really wanted or needed for a project and you also get a lot of variability in between uh, images that you generate. One of the the conversation that we had uh, just this week with a professional was, you know, they're they're they love the fact that Midjourney can create really cool pictures, but they struggle with using it on projects because they really really need consistency, and they need it to match certain specifications. Um, they need it to like look a certain way, be composed a certain way, and so they are struggling with that. Uh, the balance of control as well as the flexibility that these tools provide. So this studio session is our first studio, studio session. And I, I've got to remember not to like Dwight Schrute the table because I am very emphatic and uh, I like pounding the table a lot. And I know it makes a lot of noise. Um, each week, we're going to spend an hour or so working on creative problems that we hear, uh, both from the community as well as from the professionals we talk with. We're going to show how uh, I play around with and use these tools as I'm helping educate our customers. Um, again, Innovoke is an open source project. We have an enterprise tool that we're deploying to commercial creative teams and kind of helping bridge that gap where a lot of companies are looking at these tools and saying we need you know, to, to really integrate this into our pipeline in a way that the creative is controlling it rather than we're you know rolling our, our our dice on generations for three hours and hope, hoping to get something. Um, and what we want to do is, is demonstrate how we can bridge that gap to everybody and take the challenges that you all are experiencing and walk through and work through those live. Um, I also recognize a lot of times on the YouTube videos, um, you're getting the kind of final result and not seeing the messy middle of me kind of figuring out how to show a certain idea or concept. Um, you know, I try to simplify as much as possible on our YouTube series so that it's accessible. And I think a lot of people like that. Um, but sometimes there's questions that people have that come up, you know, what, how did you know to do X? What is, what is inspiring? Uh, y? And I want to answer those, uh, live, right? So I want, I want us to be able to, to kind of walk through that together. Um, I'll try to showcase some of the way that, um, you know, different workflows can accomplish objectives, creative objectives. Um, I'll go through a couple of the 
you know, different techniques that you can use, like control nets and IP adapters. And I'll show you that it's not, it's not always perfect, right? There, there are um, these, these kinds of conversations almost you have to have with the, the tool to understand how is it looking at what I just gave it? How can I help it understand what I'm looking for? And how can we craft ultimately that, that final asset that we want to create? Um, so we are going to start with an idea of kind of the world that we're building in and just to kind of like, you know, uh, I did, I did improv theater for, uh, a couple of years. So I'm ready for this. You all give me what you want. I want to show you that this isn't something I prepped for. Um, you know, we can kind of, uh, we're going to do it live and it'll be a lot of fun because you'll see me kind of like struggle and work through how to get to that ultimate uh, goal of what we're talking about from a um, that kind of world and IP. So, you know, we'll, we'll focus on the idea of creating NPCs for some new world, some new game. Um, you know, we were we're trying to aim for this process of ideating what might we be going for, iterating on that concept, and then really hitting a couple of key points on consistency. How can we get that? Uh, to, to come through and generate some final assets that we can use as an NPC. We are going to obviously record this and post it on YouTube. Um, and we will also um, kind of showcase how we get to those assets and share some of the process uh, along the way. If you see something that you're interested in, like I'm going to use probably a, a file that uh, is, is kind of a nice initial image template. If you're interested in that, I can throw it in the chat, um, but you all can can really just ask questions along the way. Um, I will try to keep an eye on the chat as we go through and yeah, we'll get started. Um, so I know one thing that people are asking about is uh, access to public models. So for the sake of just being able to follow along, I'll use Juggernaut. Uh, Juggernaut's a pretty popular model right now. You can download it from your favorite model source, uh, wherever that happens to be. Uh, and we'll just use uh, that model. I might, I might need to fight a little bit with the prompt to, to get it ironed out. Um, I've got some ideas on, on things that we can use to get uh, some good assets, but uh, follow along, ask questions, and uh, <laughs> you know, ask, ask for what you need to see to help understand the tools a little better. Um, so today we're focusing on NPCs. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open the floor for some suggestions from the audience. I've got one already, which is spaghetti demons, but I'm going to try to try to avoid the uh, the spaghetti verse if I can, uh, despite that being a fascinating uh, world. Um, and we'll go through and kind of create a couple of things. Um, so I'll give you guys just a second here uh, to 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 think through what world we're going to create. If if I don't get one from you, I'm going to spin the dice and chat chat GPT and see what it gives me. Um, some some questions that somebody asked are these tips going to be generally applicable to other front ends or mostly specific to invoke? I think it'll probably apply to most front ends. Um, the the process of using the tools to get to the outcome should all not be exactly the same like workflow in the sense that like the ui is going to be different um, but ultimately you'll still kind of get you'll get to the the same place if you use the same types of techniques um okay so i've got a couple of suggestions here we've got like fa old fantasy castle uh we've got medieval uh dragonborn uh steampunk modernized greek gods uh I do think modernized Greek gods would be kind of cool, um, primarily because that's uh, there's there's a, a fun uh, <laughs> there's a fun campaign uh, or world of like Magic the Gathering Theros, uh, which funny enough is uh, Peter Morbacher, one of the artists that is on our advisory board, actually created Theros. Uh, so that one's actually a, a fun uh, fun idea. Maybe I'll take that one and run with it. Um, yeah, let's do it. We'll do like kind of modernized Greek gods and figure out how we can do that. Um, it'll be an interesting journey because 
Uh, it'll also show, I think this is a really good one, it'll show how hard that's going to be. Uh, and the reason why it's going to be hard is when you prompt for something like Zeus, there's, a, there's this concept of Zeus that is multifaceted, right? There is the Zeus that we're all familiar with from, you know, Greek myth. Uh, you've got statues of Zeus, uh, the kind of like old uh, dude with, uh, you know, white, white beard, kind of big burly guy. That's kind of the, the mind that, uh, or the mental model that everyone has of Zeus. We'll dive in and try to figure out how we can get um, some of those gods in kind of like a modernized setting, um, maybe kind of reimagine what those gods might look like. Um, and this is also an area where maybe I'm not going to prompt for Zeus because my idea of Zeus is in this modernized world, maybe it's different. Like maybe I don't want to do as many callbacks to the old idea of Zeus. And I'm thinking about, you know, kind of uh, uh, the modern lightning god in some sense and who, what would Mount Olympus look like in the modern world and all of that kind of stuff. So that could be very, very interesting. Um, we'll focus today on more of an artistic concept art style, like what you would expect to see go into something like a video game. Uh, photorealism is something we can definitely do in the future. I see a couple people asking about that. We can talk about photography and in painting, you know, photos and stuff like that, which is a use case that a lot of people play around with. Uh, but we'll we'll do the NPC today and see see where we end up. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do uh, now that we're kind of focusing on Greek gods is we need to get a couple of ideas down on paper and a couple of concepts that we like. I think when I'm playing around with an idea, I very rarely like prompt and get the final thing and then I'm done with it because when you have an idea when you have a concept that you want to make real you want to use this as a tool rather than as just kind of like whole hawk giving it everything is very often you won't get what you really were thinking about in the first place if you do that so we want to kind of control this in some way um, we'll talk about uh, controlling for different specifications as well um, Typically, when you're creating an NPC or concept art, um, you you have something that you are trying to map to your pipeline, right? Your creative pipeline. You need a certain specification. You need the character to be in a certain pose or in a certain spot. Um, and so we're going to try to control uh, a lot of that generation process uh, using the tools at our disposal in Invoke. And we'll play around with that and see what we get. Um, so let's go through uh, that process. What I could do first, and maybe what I want to do first, is come up with a prompt and play around with getting consistency in some amount of that style through a prompt first before we start controlling it and getting the like specific characters that we're looking for. Um, so we'll do um, NPC concept art award-winning uh, and painted style. Uh, typically very helpful when you're crafting a prompt to use more than just like basic stuff like this. Um, a couple of things that I think about when I'm crafting a prompt is what are the stylistic elements and, and uh, the aesthetics that, that we're going for? what what is going to create depth and what is going to create the type of asset that we need um, i'm going to go for uh probably something that's a a little bit uh more on the finished side of an asset you can kind of do some flat color uh npc concepts and line arts stuff but i'm going to kind of go more towards the final asset just so that we can kind of play around with that um, and so going back into art history there's like a lot of terms if you i, I bought a an art history book uh, from half half price books uh, and just kind of went through and like picked up a lot of new terms and in, in the uh, the lore of art uh, and so things like uh, chiaroscuro uh, lumine and pastos uh, these terms kind of pull out and evoke different art styles that I've I've typically found uh, pretty cool um, medium uh, we'll do digital painterly art. Uh, I like to throw in a little bit of like oil painting, maybe oil and acrylics. Uh, 
and then we'll do Zeus. We'll just see what we get. Zeus as a modern. What 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 would Zeus be in the modern world? He'd probably be some sort of like head honcho, uh, Mount Olympus. Maybe he's like a banker. Uh, he owns like a big bank. Mount Olympus. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what we get. Uh, negative prompts. You know, there's a pretty decent set of, um, you know, just use distorted, blurry. Uh, typically, I like to use a, a counter art style like photo. Um, just to kind of really separate in the latent space, where are we focusing? And we're focusing on like more, more art. Um, so we will give that a shot and see what we generate. Um, I didn't have that model loaded up, so it'll take a second to uh, pull in and then we'll, we'll go. Yeah, somebody, somebody's calling out American Gods. I'm a big American Gods fan. Um, so that, that is fun. Uh, I hadn't, I hadn't made the connection that we're effectively like recreating uh, that that vibe, but um, I think it was Thor in American Gods, not uh, not Zeus, but it's just kind of all all connected. Sad the show got canned. Okay, uh, so we've got Zeus. Uh, as you can see, this is this is where we get um, if we're if we're pulling out something like Zeus, we're going to do a lot of callbacks that we may not want to that concept of Zeus from mythology. He's got these like coins on his chest. He's got this big beard. It's not really like modern in a traditional sense. Uh, it feels like very historical in some sense. He's got like this, this money on the table. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this to um, uh, Ronnie Elderly man white beard uh well-dressed banker and we'll even do like futuristic to give a little bit of like a uh we don't really want futuristic maybe like modern style dollar dollar bills ceo zeus Here we go. So we've got we've got this uh, this gentleman here, and I think we're getting a decent style out of this. Uh, I could I could buy that being Zeus. He looks a little bit more elderly than I want, so maybe um, we'll just do a brawny man instead of elderly. And we get get rid of some of those wrinkles. The thing that I want to do now, though, is you know this is helpful if we're doing character portraits, and I probably would you know take this and uh, we could spin up another set of character portraits if we want but really what i want to do is i want to get this to be like a full body concept art so i can actually use this as an asset um, so we'll do full body in pc concept art and then what i'm going to do to control the generation is go to our image to image tab um, one asset that i pulled in um, is this kind of white background with a darker center and on the image to image uh, YouTube series where we talk through uh, the basics of this this concept of like the image to image denoising process, the the thing to note here is we're we're kind of manipulating that initial noise that this process is going to run on to focus more on the center with this as our input. So it's going to have uh, kind of subject matter closer towards the center and white closer on the outside. Typically, when you do this type of um, process and you use something like uh, white background, we can get a little bit more control over where in space, like where in the composition, our generation is going to come in. And so in this case, um, we'll take this over to our initial image and we'll go ahead and invoke and we'll see that shape kind of gravitate more towards the center. Now, one thing that can happen is you might get uh, a head uh, if you haven't really focused uh, the, the prompt specifically on like a full body. Um, but you can see we've got kind of like our, our modern Zeus walking in an awkward way uh, towards the camera. So we might do standing pose uh, and we will do be a plus on the white background. 
this to make sure that that's clean and we'll generate another one. All right, so he's now standing. He looks like this. Um, he only looks like a modern Zeus. Now, I think the question that we have to answer now is how do we how do we incorporate uh, the notion of like Zeus? Now, this could be just any old um, old guy here, right? And how do we like incorporate some of those electric elements or lightning elements, um, which we can start to do with a number of techniques. Um, maybe we'll just try prompting for it, um, trying to figure out, let's do like a lightning brooch, a lightning bolt shaped, maybe a belt buckle. Be fun, do the belt buckle here. Let's see what we generate. We might have to do this in end painting, which is where it gets real fun. I could see that. He's got like this like fanny pack thing though on the side. Um, I don't really like the fanny pack. We're going we're gonna to get something else here. I think we might get that lightning bolt tie that somebody was asking for on this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, uh, I kind of like the, the funny pose. Um, We'll, we'll kind of fix this up though, because we're going to need to do some canvas stuff. Um, what I first want to do is kind of go in and fix this face. I think one thing that will happen when you're using like base generation models is if you get the, the more distant assets, um, like character concept art, um, anything where the face in pixel space is kind of in that smaller, maybe like 64 by 64 block you get kind of like the details look like a little artifacty. Um, and in the canvas, we're going to go in and really just do that core scaled in painting workflow. Um, what the unified canvas does, just as a reminder for folks who don't know about it, we're going to kind of zoom in to a certain spot. The area that we're focusing on is really within this bounding box. And we are going to allow it to regenerate that area at a higher resolution and then take those details and bring them back in. And that's because the AI models are able to generate really good details when you have a larger image, but when you get more of these distant elements, they can get a little bit, um, a little bit funky and you really want to focus in on the areas that you need to look good. Um, so we'll take that in and we are going to decrease our denoising strength which is going to um, allow us to keep more of our original structure here. Again, that's kind of going through that image to image process uh, and we'll just regenerate that face. And while this is generating, I will look at a couple of questions. Uh, expanding the advanced options from the model. Uh, we can look at the scheduler, the steps, the CFG scale. I will note that I'm on a beta build of diffusers, um, which means that uh, I've got a, an update that is going to change how some of these schedulers behave. Um, as of right now, if you're using Excel, I would use Euler. Um, and I'll type that out, Euler or Euler A right now. Um, DPM++, 2M, and all of the other Kind of like plus plus models or schedulers are um they're getting kind of like an, an enhancement and an update in the next diffusers release which will be in the next invoke release as well um yeah i would i would not i would not over index on schedulers and kind of like models being optimized for schedulers i think most of the schedulers just have a different way of sampling noise and you'll be able to get pretty decent results out of many of them um, in this case, uh, you know, if you want to just see what will happen if we use Euler Ancestral, um, we've got a pretty decent face here. I, you know, I like it, um, but we'll use Euler uh, for the rest of the generations, just so you can see it's it's going to generate largely um, similar results with maybe a little bit more, a um, little bit of a softer look to it. So when I'm focusing in on this area. What I really need to think about is what is the AI model looking at? 
um, what is it seeing and what is the prompt that I use need to describe so that it makes sense. Um, right now, because the prompt is focusing on the entire image, it's not really helping the model understand what exactly are we focusing on in this box and what is it that I'm being asked to, to regenerate. Um, and, and so in this case, we want uh, lightning bolt shaped uh, roach. And one thing that I also believe helps quite a bit is using an image reference here. Um, we'll take out, uh, we'll do close up of a tie or close up of the chest of a well dressed banker. We'll take our IP adapter and we're going to focus in on this region. And I'm going to take the uh, image clip so that it, it is effectively, I'm telling the IP adapter, look at this region. Um, so we'll take our uh, SDXL IP adapter and it is now focusing on that clip, that region. And I'm going to decrease the weight of this to, we'll say, 0.5 or so. It should largely be the same. And then I'm going to mask the area that I want to regenerate. I'll probably give two or three uh, options here. Um, and while it's generating, we'll answer some questions. Um, these are being recorded, so we will post this on YouTube and answer those questions later. Um, or we'll answer additional questions later, but if you if you watch the recording and you have questions, you can feel free to shoot uh, out an update on Discord. So I'm going to cancel this because I think I probably need to, just based on looking at this, increase our denoising strength. Uh, so we're going to increase that de denoising strength up to 0.75 or so. Uh, and this is where things get a little bit of a little bit fun in the creative process. We have to figure out how to get uh, the shape that we're looking for to be generated by the system. And this is where I think we're probably going to need control nut because um, it's just kind of going in and doing its own thing, uh, which is okay. It's okay. Um, we're going to do that. We're going to take this uh cancel that out and we're going to focus on this region to clip and we're going to just draw in the shape that we're looking for here uh what we want to do is kind of close this up and we'll take our yellow and we'll give it a nice lightning bolt shape. And really what I'm what I'm trying to do right now is not necessarily get everything that I want out of this uh, from a color perspective. I'm trying to compose the color into regions so that when it's going through the denoising process, it's kind of picking that up. But I, what I also want to do is on the control net, when I pick up this region, I'm going to use a canny control net. I'm going to import this in and it's going to pick up that edge, right? Because I've kind of gone through and made it really high contrast. It's going to pick up that edge. So when it's going through and regenerating this, it's going to constrain to that shape that I've drawn. Now, I just looking at this, I probably need to fix some of this here so it doesn't pick up that as an edge, maybe blend in a little bit more some of these colors and then we'll take another clip. Yeah, so now we've got a really clean lightning bolt there in the control nut. And when we regenerate this, we'll have a lot more confidence that it's going to regenerate it in this shape and with these colors. Um, we'll still got our IP adapter up. We still got our shape there and we'll pull our denoising strength down so that we're really focusing on this, this concept. Now, I will call out uh, if you are a professional artist and you're working on this level of detail, you're likely pop popping this into Photoshop and just sketching it out yourself. This is this part of the workflow is probably a little bit more of just showing the capabilities of the tools and how to control it. Um, most professional artists, what, what they'll do is they will generate some of these assets uh, in 
individually and then composite those in Photoshop so that they can kind of pull those together into something coherent. Um, if we zoom out now, we've got kind of like our lightning shaped symbol. He looks a little bit like a super superhero banker. Um, which is probably fine. That's I guess that's effectively what uh, a modern Greek god would look like anyways. Uh, it's a little bit like a superhero. He's <laughs> one thing that I'm like noticing now though is he's got uh, he's got a vest and he's got this like belt outside of the vest. Uh, I'm being told that a brooch is actually gonna be spelled differently, which may may help that generation process too. Um, thank you, Devin. <laughs> yeah, uh, or JP. Uh, both of you guys calling out. So, I mean, we we controlled a lot of it with our generation, but I'm probably going to do a little bit more. And I'll take down the strength of our um, control nut, so it's got a little bit of flexibility towards the end. And we'll just do three more. Now we've got the the puns are coming out. Brooching, brooching the subject, broaching the subject. And we'll get rid of this like belt too. And I don't want to focus too much on Zeus alone because then we won't have any fun with the, any of the other gods. Uh, but we'll fix up this like belt thing, and then we'll uh, say Zeus has been solidly composed all right i think i'm going to take that one because it looks decent all right so we're going to control this guy and get him fixed up uh we'll just Go ahead and paste over everything that we don't like. Uh, and I'm going to pull the prompt out of the original image that we created because that'll make my life easier. Um, I just pulled the prompt out by right clicking on that. And I think we can just, you know, I don't think we need the lightning bolt shaped belt buckle anymore, but we'll leave it in there and see if it, honestly, I don't think you should probably have a belt at this point. Um, so we probably just want to take that out and regenerate. And we need to take out our IP adapter too, and our control knot, because those will cause some problems. All right, there we go. I think we'll take that. It's good enough for government business anyways. I'm going to save the whole picture out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, delete stuff that we didn't end up using. I may keep this one around just for the prompt. Um, and I may go ahead and create a board for stuff that I'm keepers here. We'll call them the keepers. So I'm going to take out kind of like the final assets and we'll use, we'll do our generations in the NPC board. And then on the keepers board, we'll kind of use the, the full set. So what I may do now is I may take this image here as an IP adapter. Uh, we'll pull it in. Do I want to use that as an IP adapter? It'd be useful in controlling some of the style, but it might pull in too many of the elements like the kind of business attire. So maybe I won't do that. I'll just use our standard um, prompt here and I'll kind of drive that consistency with the prompt. One thing that I'll call out, um, and this is, you know, we're, we're dealing with prompts right now. When you're a professional team that is doing this type of work, more often than not, the best way to drive consistency of styles with a custom model. Um, we have not really touched on the training process yet. Um, we've not touched on like how to create your own custom model, but I think it's worth calling out. Um, you know, we've done some work with uh, game studios where, for example, we'll take art from their concept art pipeline, 
that has has a very specific style. It also has a very specific structure. Um, you, you typically produce things like orthos, where you've got um, the character kind of looks like uh, they're they're uh, in like a rigid pose. It's kind of like a mannequin pose because it can show how to to model that character. You can have all of that, inclusive of style, inclusive of pose, controlled by a Laura model, and then you're not really worrying about about prompt for style consistency. You're just focusing on the things like what are the the specific elements that we want to see in this image. And if there are ideas or concepts that you can train into a model, that's typically going to help you better understand how to use the prompt language because you're tuning that language to what you're using in your workflow. Um, but it also just helps from a consistency standpoint. For now, we're just going to use our prompts and we'll kind of go go about it that way. Um, but we'll maybe go for maybe Hades now. Um, what would a modern Hades look like? Maybe like a biker, right? Um, biker with, let's say like a spectral biker with a helmet shaped like a skull. Pretty cool, right? Uh, leather jacket, black leather jacket. Modern style. Okay, so we'll do again. We're doing this kind of like initial image as our um, template, if you will, to kind of keep everything focused on the center. Uh, there's a couple of other templating uh, techniques you can do. You can obviously do something like a control net at a low weight, where you've got a character in the middle in a pose. If you're doing orthos, you can like have the the pose that way, and you can control it. Uh, you just are going to want to make sure that the weight is low so that it has flexibility. It's going to be relatively low, like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 on that weight. Um, but this I typically find has uh, a little bit more variability when we're trying to get these types of these types of poses out. Um, so we'll go ahead and generate and see what we get. Uh, oh, modern Hades, totally a politician. That is that is true. It could be good. Um, system specs that I'm working on, I'm working on a 4090. Uh, so that is a question that comes up is how is it so quick? It's, I've got 24 gigabytes of VRAM. Um, there are, I would say other ways you can get speed, um, other than upgrading your card. Uh, you can use cloud services, uh, invoke has 24 gigabyte cards on our cloud service. Um, typically, I think you'll find if you've got anywhere from tw like 8 to 12 gigabytes, things will run pretty quickly for you locally. Um, we're definitely getting more of like a skull, like literally just a skull uh, as a helmet, which is probably like less the vibe I was going for than just kind of like a um, biker helmet. So we'll do a biker helmet, and then I'm going to do skull themed and I'm going to use a minus on the end of that so that it's not creating just like massive skulls. Um, it's definitely more Skeletor than Hades. The, and we still might be getting more, more skull, like skull, uh, there, there's this like philosophical, uh, interesting element here with, with skulls because skulls are so prevalent in art the word skull is like really, really powerful. It, we, we as humans are like fascinated with skulls. And so you get just massive, massive numbers of skulls. Um, so we're gonna try to like really downplay the idea of the skull and hopefully we can just get it to be a little bit of like a light theme on top of a biker helmet. Um, I, I still think this guy's got a skull coming through here. Uh, I'm going to cancel and clear all one thing that, um, you know, maybe, maybe the easiest thing to do is let this be, uh, just the foundation that we go through and in paint over. Um, that might, that might be the easiest way to do this. Cause we're going to get a lot of those, um, underlying vibes just from the shape and color of this. And we can probably just have that come through that way. 
uh, biker helmet. So we'll turn this down to like 0.7 or so. Got a good biker. Now I'm questioning myself on uh, how how much this is going to look still like a skull. Uh, somebody asked where my three iterations are going. What I'm doing right now is I am generating uh, I'm generating three in the queue, but if I see that my first generation isn't working out the way that I want it to go, one of the benefits with you know being able to see the progress image is that you can kind of get a, an idea of what it's picking up with your prompt and you can cancel that out so you can save time. Uh, so I'm, I'm canceling those uh, with three, the latest version, the cancel current item button is a singular cancel, but if you hold down the shift key, that'll just clear out the entire queue. And so that's, that's what I'm doing right now. Um, I think this one might need a little bit more uh, denoising strength to get away from the skull. Uh, what, one thing to, to also call out with SDXL and in painting is you're really using quite a bit of the denoising strength to, to kind of battle against the the way that the SDXL model was trained. Um, the SDXL model had a refiner on the last 20 to 30 percent of the steps. And so you're you're kind of like trying to do the mental math of what that denoising strength ought to be. Um, this is definitely not the style that we're going for. So I'm just going to kind of ramp this up and see if we can start getting this to go where we want it to go. Otherwise, we're going to have to take this a completely different direction and start in painting on it. Yeah, see that one's too strong. This this 0.9 and 0.8 denoising strength threshold is one that you'll find with SDXL. Um, and maybe this is not interesting, but I, I think I think it's like a useful tool to recognize. Um, right around 0.8 to 0.9, you'll start to see that it goes from maintaining the shape and the structure to abandoning it completely and kind of regenerating the image. So if you do this at like 0.9 or 0.95, similar similar to how we saw with the uh, initial image where we use that kind of like blurry circle, how it's able to create an entirely new image that doesn't look like a blurry circle at around 0.9. It's because that's, that's the uh, point in which the SDXL models will start to kind of really do the composition piece. So pulling that underneath can um, help get a little bit more control there. So we're going to pull that to 0.85 and we are probably going to do just a couple things here. Close up of a biker with a biker helmet. Uh, we're going to try to see if we can get this to not see the skull. It, it wants to see the skull. Uh, it wants to see the skull in this helmet. There we go. I think that's a little bit better. Uh, looks kind of like a little bit like a skull. Yeah, there's a good question um, in the, the chat of could you add a previous character as an IP adapter to get the vibe from that? I think the answer is yes. Uh, there, there are some useful ways to pull that out, and, and maybe that's something that we should um, kind of show right now. Um, I might take this one, for example, uh, here and say that we're maybe, uh, maybe okay with that. I probably need to compare the styles here. I don't think this is too close to what we generated here before. This one looks a little bit more like a rendering, like an Unreal render, and this this has a little bit of a different vibe. So let, let's actually try that. Um, I, I think I should just take skull themed out. We're going we're gonna to work on spectral and hopefully give us some of our Hades vibes that way. I'll pull this into an IP adapter and we can kind of take a look at how that works. So the, the different IP adapters that exist, you have your base level IP adapter, which is going to pull out concept, pull out style, and try to like pull those together into the new image. It's not strict and it's a little bit looser. If you do IP adapter plus, you are pulling out a lot of the composition, the structure, uh, colors of the image. It's, it's effectively saying like, 
that image is what I'm using as the prompt. And I want to generate something like that image rather than be inspired by it. So for this use case of we're trying to generate a biker, but we're going to use an image of our like older uh, Zeus banker, um, you know, we'll pull that down to 0.35 or so. Um, might even need to go lower. And we'll see how we can push this closer towards the spectral biker with a, a biker helmet, even though we're kind of using that underlying um, concept. And I think this actually gets a better style. Um, I need to move over to the image to image tab so we get the same structure. Uh, but I do think this helped with like getting a closer style. So that's, um, that's actually super helpful. And generate this this way. And I think that'll be, be useful. And as you can see, one, one element of this that you have to be mindful of, I definitely got a little bit of that Zeus beard in. Um, when you're switching between these different workflows, you're kind of bouncing between different jobs to be done um, in the sense that you're using different tools to get to different outcomes. Um, so it's important to kind of be mindful of the different options that you're switching between on the options panel. Um, we've got some enhancements that we're anticipating will help with that type of workflow switching uh, coming up in the near future. Um, but in the meantime, there's uh, a lot of things that you can do to, to control things you need to kind of keep an eye on. Now this, this guy right here, I, I really like as our, as our Hades uh, biker, this guy picked up the, and you know, this, this kind of where I was calling out, if you use IP adapter, you can get the style, but what you need to be mindful of is it may pick up certain elements, like, you know, giving our biker a tie, uh, or a beard. This one, however, is a really, really good example of where you're able to pick up some of that, the stylistic elements and, uh, pull that into a new generation. And so we can take this, we can kind of fiddle with it a little bit, uh, Maybe we, for example, want to change the tint or color of this. Um, and so we can take this, maybe get some like spectral colors, make it a little opaque, um, switching to the base layer. And then I'm going to kind of like map over this with the new color. Um, maybe it's a little bit of green here as well. And we'll get some highlights on the top. And then we'll regenerate this at a low denoising strength. Maybe something like 0.6 or so. Kind of recolor those, those vibes. Um, negative keywords could help get rid of the skull. Some people did call that out. That probably would have, would have been an easier thing to do. Um, what, one thing that is, um, definitely helpful is when you're doing a negative prompt, it'll eliminate the concept. What we were trying to do and where, where this is, you know, kind of a, a creative task is we were trying to get inspiration from that skull. Right. We, we wanted the skull. We just didn't want it to become like a full skull. We wanted it to, to kind of be inspired by uh, the skull. And that's why you wouldn't want to necessarily put it in the negative prompt. Um, so it's it's it would have gotten rid of the skull, but it would have gotten rid of, rid of the skull con completely. Um, and that's maybe not something that we would have wanted. Um, this one, we've kind of gotten to a good concept here. I think this is like a good one for Hades. Um, we could probably play around with a skull belt buckle if we wanted to but i think you kind of get the concept here of of we can kind of create uh different elements we already did that with the the zeus character and i'm being mindful of time when i get to our last uh last god um so we'll save this to the gallery um one question that came up was are there limits on ip adapters um i think the the question there is maybe like what are the, what's the extent you can use IP adapters? You can use multiple IP adapters. 
uh, in the same generation. So you can kind of like take two disparate concepts and fuse them together. Um, this is a technique that you know most people would call blending or concept blending, and that would be, um, you know, let's say I've done I've done a robot uh, when I'm when I'm trying to create like some kind of like robot spider character. I've taken a picture of a spider and a picture of a robot and used those to varying weights to kind of get that overall structure of the spider, but the uh, style of the robot, and then you can kind of play around with it that way. So. A lot of a lot of playing with this technology and, and creating with the technology is understanding how the prompts that you're giving it, including your own sketches, your own style, uh, those are all tools for you to control the output. What most professionals are going to do in this workflow is they are going to establish and create a couple of useful workflows and patterns that fit to their process. So it might be you know take uh, a couple of concepts that I have and create a character uh, that is in a certain structure or in a certain pattern, like an like NPC concept art. And I'm going to use that workflow over and over again, right? I'm just going to kind of like uh, regenerate for all the different jobs that I need to, or the different characters that I'm creating, I'm going to use that same pattern and that same workflow. And, and part of this is really nailing down, you know, what are the set of inputs that help you control that to get to that final asset that you're trying to deliver? It could be IP adapter images, it could be um, control nets, it could be an input image. All of these are really just various inputs that you're putting through the process in order to get to that outcome. Now, this is where, again, a trained Laura, which understands A, the prompts that you're putting in because you've tuned it on your language and the kind of the style you're going for, your, your purpose building a Laura for a job, right? Is to do a specific style, to focus on a specific character, to you know really emphasize that concept. And so that's like a helpful thing to remember is as a creative, depending on what you're going for, you have all of these tools at your disposal and you want to create that workflow that really fits with your pipeline and your process. And then you can just use those um, again and again. So we'll use maybe the IP adapter from both of our gods to get to our final uh, image. We'll do this uh, again at like a low 0.3 uh, weight. Um, and we'll see, we've got our Zeus over here. Probably need something a little bit brighter. Um, let's see, what are we gonna come up with for the other gods? Maybe Artemis. Artemis is cool. She's an archer. Would that be in the modern modern day? That would be maybe a little bit brighter in a concept to distinguish. Maybe Artemis is like a cyber punky ha hacker with like a lot of like retro wavy vibes. Uh, why, why? Because the modern like frontiers are the internet. Something, something like that. I don't know. Um, you, you didn't push me for it. Uh, the original challenge was four NPCs. Oh gosh. Okay. Uh, we, we better rush then. We got five minutes. Uh, so we'll do a uh, cyber punk woman uh, hacker hood hooded, uh, bright, neon, teal, and green modern style. We're using these two to pull in that style and we'll do our image to image. So now that we've got our style for these two, we're using that as an IP adapter. We are hoping that this pulls through the style and not as much of the color. Um, we should have a decent amount of our color come in from the prompt here, but we may need to do bright. It's a little bit further behind. We need to go up and do our denoising strength. So that low denoising strength still created the character, but it didn't have as much flexibility as it needed. Oh yeah. So yeah, the fact that we've got two styles or two examples of our style that we like now and we're using that as an IP adapter, we're starting to really get uh, 
a little bit more consistency in that style when we're generating these new assets. Um, so we might actually be able to reach our goal of four NPCs uh, pretty quickly since we've nailed that down. Uh, we, you know, I think this will work. We'll, we'll use this one. Uh, I'm going to do just some in painting because we want to make sure the face looks good. Uh, and we'll turn these IP adapters off because we're not going to need it for this. Oh, no. Uh, we'll go down and paint. And we'll turn this down to 0.55. Someone better be coming up with some good concepts for the fourth god. Uh, let's see. Got... Got Zeus and Hades. My Greek gods are like failing me. Mars, Ares, one of those is Roman. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's what we want right there. Look at that. That is sick. Oh, we like that. We like that. Okay, cool. We're going to take that and we're going to save it. And we're going to get our last god here. Uh, and it is going to be... Yeah, Mars is the Roman version of Ares. Uh... Poseidon, Apollo. Okay, there's some good ideas. Okay, let's let's think here. How do we get Poseidon? Poseidon, Mars. Which one do we like better? I'm trying to think what like mo a modern water god would be. It's like Dasani, the Dis the god of Dasani. Uh Maybe he's like a yeah, he's like a marketing executive, an executive that sells bottled water. Uh okay. Apollo, a sailor. Okay, that's obvious, right? It's a sailor. Um just like a modern, modern sailor. It's like a yacht captain. Um all right, we'll do that. Uh and what the hell? We'll we'll go ahead and we'll add in our third character as just like double, triple emphasizing our style. Uh, and we'll do a an admiral. Yeah, that's a good term, right? A stunning white suit. Black braided beard. Okay, no, I'm just getting weird. Okay, we're going to try it. Uh, we'll go back to our Image to image, we'll increase our denoising strength, and we'll go forward and have fun. I don't know if it's going to have a braided beard. I don't know how many. I don't know how many people have braided beards, but I'm trying to get a little bit, a little bit more out there with our, uh, with our god. This one, this guy looks a little bit more realistic than I think. Oh, you know what? We don't have our IP adapters on. Aha. So IP adapters, they do help. They do help. Navy SEAL. That's a good one. All right, I'm going to turn off the progress image so we can look at this one real quick. Let's see what we got. Oh, yeah, he's got sunglasses on. This is our favorite, our favorite admiral ever. Okay. Yeah, we, we get get a little bit of that. We're we're pulling in a little bit too much of our banker though. I think he's got like a tie and stuff. Um let's do the glasses are coming in too. Let's pull this down a little bit, pull this down a little bit. That. Oh no, like a minute over, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be chastised for violating the, the hour the hour length, but we're gonna do it anyways. We want to get to that final that final admiral I think that style works out pretty well just really want to fight fight against that tie though I hate that golden tie on Poseidon it needs to be some other color
These buttons are also a little bit of work. So we'll take one of these three and we'll fix it up in canvas real quick and then we'll call it a day. This guy's the best. Take down. Going to pull this out. And when we're doing in painting, the reason why we can, you know, do do it without the IP adapter as much is because it's got some of the context from the image when it's generating. Um, so it's able to, to solve for some of the style questions. Um, so we're going to take that guy out. Um, want blue, like blue, a dark blue tie. And maybe we don't really want the sunglasses, so we can do some of this. I'm just going to rough it in and we'll keep the denoising strength pretty high. Yeah. All right. So Do this at around 0.75 to see what we get. Green ascot to the prompt could probably do pretty well. So we've gone in and we've kind of fixed up our admiral. We got rid of that golden tie. Still has some, some kind of like gold ornamentation, but we could go in and fix that as well if we wanted to. I think we're in a good spot though. He looks pretty clean. Uh, so we'll save him out. Uh, and we are going to, I realized I started generating in the keepers section. So we're just gonna move everything that we didn't want back out. So we've got our four here. We're gonna keep. Go through our characters and talk about our consistency, see if we like it. We've got our uh, hacker Artemis, we've got our Admiral Poseidon. Uh, went to the wrong tab. Uh, went to our Hades biker, and then we've got our like banker Zeus. Uh, so we've got a really strong set of NPCs, the styles relatively consistent between them. Um, again, we touched on using things like control nut on the canvas to, to guide some of the generation pieces when we're trying to do very specific shapes, structures, things like that. Um, you start to see a lot of how image color and structure can guide both the image to image process. If you're doing a massive image transformation, you can use things like you know, templates and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can, if you switch back and forth between invoke and something like Photoshop, where you have some of those creative controls and you're, you've got like a, a Wacom tablet and you're just sketching out and adding all of these layers on top. Um, that's a really, really strong way of composing the control images that then come in and generate with Invoke. Invoke pairs really well um, with that, that type of natural artistic process that you're already going through as a creative. Um, so that is it for today, but to talk a little bit kind of like uh, close us out. Uh, first, thank you all for joining. Uh, it's really fun to do this with an audience as large and as involved and engaged as you all. It's really, really cool. Um, we are going to do more of these. So we'll start to do this on a pretty regular basis. Um, we are growing the community quite a bit. Um, I think people have started to, to sense that. Um, if you are interested in in helping either on the coding side or on the kind of community aspects like um, helping with education, with uh, teaching people how to use the tool, things like that. Um, make sure to, to check with uh, IMIC. He's our community wizard and you know does a lot of that uh, planning and stuff. Um, also share what you're making, uh, both here in the, the Discord, we've got the uh, outdoor channel, but share it with the world, right? I think um, we love to see 
every, what everyone's doing on uh, social media. It helps get the word out. It helps build the community. Um, share, share the ideas and feedback that you have on this session and how we can make the next studio session uh, even better. And if you learned anything today, uh, if there's like a cool tip, trick, I thing that you didn't realize, but you had that like aha moment, uh, just share it in the tools and tips chat. I learned X, Y, Z. I didn't know that before because it might teach someone else that concept. It might help them understand it. Um, so that's it for today. We'll go ahead and conclude it. But thank you all for joining. And we're going to do this again next week. See you then. Bye.